mean, if you look at music and you look at old jazz or you look at old um, rockabilly, they all have a instinctive kind of rhythm and a and a, a real you know the the stuff that is really stripped down and basic is is always usually what's is the authentic stuff you know and then and and, and if you travel through you know through the from the 50s up different technology will come in so people will use different ways of expressing that but it's usually quite similar it's usually a very stripped down kind of thing a very simple few elements doing what they do you know uncomplicated and I think I think that's what we're doing now we've found our tools and we're we're using them in that way you know sounds um, they are seen as industrial where we live in in London it's in a warehouse this used warehouse is where we record and um, yeah it's pretty pretty grimy and there's just been a few riots there and uh, um, but it's it's a great place to create you know because you are kind of like you walk out into kind of this um, busyness um, this industrial sort of landscape I guess if we went into the country our music would be slightly different. What TG and the Cabaret Voltaire did was to push, you know, how they, I think they, through their careers, they, they kind of really pushed music and they kind of set foundations for other bands to kind of continue it. I think they also grew up in an environment that was industrial and they also started as artists like the Cone movement as they weren't trained musicians so they kind of like had more of an artistic way of approaching their music. It's all about minimalism, it's about minimalizing anything that's complex so that you get a product at the end. And when I was doing art school I had to go and work in a chocolate factory at night and I, and I kind of, I think it did sort of stay in my brain and inspired me in some way. And I did some work with Chris Cozy recently and Cozy went to, she worked in a paint factory and she said exactly the same thing, like it really inspired her way of kind of putting everything into a sense of order and um, you know making things really uncomplicated and she said the sounds of the machinery really inspired her and, and yeah it's true because it's got that repetition in it you know. bands doing stuff like we're doing though because if you look at the era we've grown up in that you've had dance music come in with like say Detroit techno and things like that you know and I'm amazed that there's other, not other people that are really influenced by that because we've grown up with that people who would just take a 303 at a drum machine to a party and create stuff like the Detroit stuff these people like that really were just there as as kind of mechanisms of a, of a party. For me, there's a massive influence in that kind of thing as well, where you'd get a group of people that weren't a band, but they were a sound system, and they'd create a dirty fucking party that was very primal, you know, very, just it stripped it completely back to nothing, you know, to a rhythm, uh, arpeggio, and a, you know, something that was very visceral, you know, very, it wasn't a band on tour, it was, it was a sound system that was surviving. We've had like um, people saying that 
the music we do are producing is what is now, music of now, and what's a good reflection of like our environment. And from the reaction of the crowds, it's always been like their, their place to escape, so it gives them an escapism. Um, I think that's really important. It's not like, it, with London, we are kind of, we've got access to so much live music that this music's more about instinctive feeling and that's going back to the techno, to the dance. Um, and we kind of have our own language for it. I'm, I'm hoping anyway, that's what we're kind of developing right now.